Hi there, this is Cassidy Frazy, and once again, this is the Walking Dead video recaps for season 6.1, the first half of season 6 that were not reviewed originally. So I'm catching up with video recaps. Yay me. And today, uh, I'm going to try to get through two of them today. And this is the first one. This is episode 6.1.6, .6, I suppose you could say. Always accountable. Yeah. Which is something they don't always do on The Walking Dead. They're not always accountable for their actions. Yeah, so. But here they are. They're always accountable. Yeah, so what happens here? Well, we're getting down to the end. We've seen everything that's been going on down in... Alexandria, and we've been seeing the stuff that's been happening with um, Michonne's group, Glenn's group. Well, Glenn's dead, right? Yeah, yeah, he's dead. Uh, but we haven't really been seeing much of what's happening with Sasha, Abraham, and Daryl. Well, today we get to see that. That's what happens in this episode. They manage to get all the way through. The zombie fun run. They hit mile marker 20, which is Rick's grand plan. He was going to lead all the zombies off to mile marker 20, and from that point, they were going to turn them loose, and the zombies would just keep walking. As Abraham said, they're going to spend the rest of their undead lives chewing on raccoons. Unless, of course, one of them happens to be Rocket, in which case, he'll just gun all their asses down. But, um, so, this being The Walking Dead, things don't go according to plan. Of course, they turn the head back toward Alexandria, and they drive right into an ambush. <laughs> they start getting gunned down by guys with, you know, heavy-duty firepower. Um, you know, Daryl dumps his bike and has to get out of there. Sasha and Abraham crash their car. And they come out with guns blazing. You know, it's just like we don't know what the hell's going on. So they get separated. Um, Abraham and Sasha go off in one direction. Daryl goes off in another direction. And they're both, they're all looking for a place to hide. Most of the action centers around Daryl, who ends up out in the middle of this burned out section of woods. And this is what I really find surprising. Everybody in Alexandria, they must not give a shit when anything's on fire. You know, we have seen the feed store had burned down. Nobody remembered seeing smoke plumes and shit. And now we're finding there's this large section of woods. And it's a fairly large section. And that's even confirmed later that... Um, that... Um, there's an area that's been torched. I mean, doesn't anybody in Alexandria do fire watch? Don't, don't they care? Oh, look, smoke. What what that's... Where's that coming from? What is this wizardry? It must be a dragon or something. You know? They just don't care. There's There's been like a couple of major fires around Alexandria, and no one gives a shit. So just let it go. So anyway... Daryl runs into three people, uh, two women, uh, Tina and Honey. There's some stripper names for you if there ever were any. And a dude going by the name of D. That's all they call them. And there's a reason for that. And we will get into that at the very, very, very end of this video. But there's a reason they just keep calling this dude D. It's because it's a game changer. But... Um, they're on the run from somebody. Probably the dudes that shot up, you know, Daryl and Sasha and Abraham. So Daryl's hiding out with these people. Well, he's not really hiding out with them because he has to. He's hiding out with them because they cold cocked them and they tied him up. And, you know, they're, they're hauling him along. Now, he's, of course, hidden his motorcycle at this point, so nobody knows where it's at. But uh, he ends up having to hang out with these guys, and he spends the night in the woods. So we're moving past the point where we saw in Alexandria that uh, the walkers were surrounding the place and they were unable to get in, which is where we actually left off the Alexandria people. But these people are, um, they spend the night out in the woods 
they're, they're hiding from someone. Uh, while Daryl's hiding in the woods, Sasha and Abraham find a place to hole up. Uh, Abraham's like, well, let's go look for Daryl. And uh, Sasha is the more practical one. And she's like, you don't track a tracker. You let the tracker come to you because he will find you. And she writes, you know, Daryl on the side of a door uh, to let them know that they're there. And, um, you know, they go inside this place and they spend the night. And it's about as cozy as anything you can find in the, in the Walking Dead universe. But uh, you, you're already starting to get the sense that there's something going on between these two. You're just not quite certain what it is. Well, getting back to Daryl and the, the lovable idiots that he's with, you find out that they're looking for this woman by the name of Patty. Why? Who knows? These, these guys are out there in the woods. They're looking. They don't know what they're doing. And it looks like they're trying to find this person and they're trying to get out. Now, Daryl at one point manages to escape and he's got like a cooler of their booty with them. So he gets away from them and he opens it up and what's in there? Insulin. One of the girls is diabetic and she needs her insulin shots. Now, you have to start wondering, by this time, you have to have a pretty good infrastructure in place for anyone who's you know, seriously diabetic to the point where they need insulin shots, that they're still able to survive. Uh, by now, most of the insulin, unless you're keeping it you know, refrigerated or it happens to be that newfangled stuff that uh, you actually can keep at room temperature, uh, most of the people who are di seriously diabetic like that have probably died by now. So this is a serious thing. It's going to cause D and the two girls to come looking for Daryl. And eventually he comes back with it and says, hey, look, you know, I've got this stuff for you. What's going on? You know, he's essentially willing to leave this stuff and go on his merry way. But of course he can't do that because the dudes that are looking for these three people, of course, at this point, show up. And Daryl decides to hide with these other fools. He manages to set up a, a walker, walker zombie uh, ambush where one dude gets bit on an arm, you know. And of course, it becomes um, extremely um, obvious that they also know the we'll chop off your limb trick so that uh, people don't die from a zombie bite because the whatever it is that's in the bite that triggers a super massive infection hasn't had a chance to spread through your bloodstream. Uh, so they, you know, they, they get to watch this happen and they get to watch this dude getting his arm hacked off and you know, they hear the, the person who's in charge of this group saying, hey, you can come back, you can stay with us, you just gotta, you know, pay for what you did and all this other bullshit and, you know, fine and dandy. So you get the impression that these three people, you know they're on the run. And they go hiking through the woods a little bit and they eventually find this burned out greenhouse. Uh, you know, he finds this burned out greenhouse and uh, they, f they eventually find Patty, who's been roasted to death. Uh, you know, she died in the, uh, you know, she died in the, um, the area or it, it may be her, you don't know. Uh, but it, what ends up happening is Tina, who is the diabetic, and hey, guess what? I have a diabetic friend whose name is also Tina, but I don't think this is her. Uh, she goes to talk to the people, you know, she's whimpering over their graves. Well, they're burned out bodies. It's not really, they're not really in a grave yet. And of course, uh, she gets bit by their zombified asses because they're buried under molten glass, so it's kind of hard. They get bit, she dies. Shit happens. Um, so it comes time. It was a good thing she got bit because, well, she was going to you know, die anyway, probably at some point. Uh, how long could you stay out there with, you know, there's only so much insulin they could pack in a little, little cooler uh, with dry ice before it goes bad. So 
they start digging graves, and we'll, we'll get back to them in a sec, but back with Sasha and Abraham, there's, there's a little bit of, I guess you could say it's almost like sexual tension in the air. And Abraham decides he's going to go out and go looking for stuff. And of course, he wanders down the road and he finds a Humvee. And he also finds a soldier who's, you know, stuck on a, a, like a pole. Uh, you know, they have these poles that they put up for wire meshes on bridges so people don't decide to jump off of them and kill themselves or throw themselves in front of trains and stuff like that. And uh, he has an RPG launcher strapped around his body. Rocket propelled grenade. Okay, well, you know, when you see a rocket propelled grenade launcher, the, we could almost call this Chekhov's launcher. You know, you see it, and of course, Abraham wants it. He also finds boxes of cigars, which he lights one up, and he's having a good old time. And you can see sort of the things going on. You know, something's working in his mind. Uh, this is one of those things where you know Abraham's still not quite over the whole Eugene thing. And he considers climbing out there to get the RPG with the walker there, and that doesn't happen. So he's, he's sitting back on the Humvee, smoking his cigar and stuff, and the walker's getting agitated, and of course he's been rotting a while. So he starts to slip through this pole. It's just digging through his body, and eventually he falls to the ground. You hear this big wet splat of his body hitting the ground, and there's the launcher. Like I said, Chekhov's launcher. Now that you've shown this RPG, and you've shown it to be there, you know something's going to happen with it. Usually it's going to get used. Do not show the RPG unless you intend on using it in, like, further on down the line. So you know this is going to happen. And Abraham goes back with the RPG. Not only with the RPG, but he goes back with this uniform he found. He's like, I'm, I'm back playing soldier boy. He, he's, he's feeling comfortable. And he finally admits to Sasha that, well, as he said, I, I like the fact that there's no bullshit about you. A greater romance has never started with better words. Uh, he's basically saying that he'd like to get to know Sasha a little better. That he knows she's not entirely crazy anymore. That he's gotten over his craziness. And he's willing to, like, see if the possibility of a relationship could exist between them. Sasha's not exactly digging this, but she's not exactly pushing him away either. So, you know, there's, there's some equilibrium starting to happen there. Not quite yet, but it's, it's, it's fermenting, I guess you could say. Meanwhile, Daryl's back digging graves so they can bury Tina. And he starts up with the recruiting questions. How many people you killed? How many walkers have you, you know, how many, how many walkers have you killed? How many people have you killed? Why? So he's thinking, hey, I can take these guys back to Alexandria. This is really going to be cool. I don't know how the hell he was going to get two other people on his bike. But they go back to his bike. And of course, as soon as he gets the bike out and he gets it up and everything, Boom! You know, he realizes I'm being punked. And there's D, the big D, pointing a gun at him. You know, and it's like, give us the bike. He gives him the bike, and it's it's also like, give us the crossbow. You know, if you don't give me the crossbow, I'm just going to shoot you and take it. So Daryl loses his bike. Daryl loses the crossbow. And D and Holly, not Holly, um, Honey, that's a Freudian slip on my part. <laughs> Holly. Um, never mind, I'm not going to say anything. Anyway, it, he's like, maybe this will be enough to let us back in. Okay. If you read the comic, you know where this is going. So they take off. Daryl's pissed. He walks a little ways. He finds a truck. He manages to get the truck started. He's a tracker, remember? 
So he finds Sasha and Abraham. You know, he pulls up in front of the place where it says Daryl. And the last thing you see of them is they're driving down the road, heading back to Alexandria. And very faintly over a radio, you hear, help, help. And that's how it ended. We're getting a lot of setups as we go along uh, in the shows. And this episode set up a shitload of stuff. So, as we always like to say, make sure you get your big girl panties on because spoilers be happening. And from this point on, I'm going to talk spoiler stuff. So if you don't want to hear it, just click the video off, go away. Uh, thank you for watching, and you can catch me in the next recap, okay? But for those of you who are wearing your big girl panties, I am, because quite frankly, I'm a pretty big girl. Uh, here's what happened. Uh, the reason they won, the, the people who shot up our group, Sasha, Abraham, and Daryl, is they're the saviors. And we know who the saviors are because we're already beginning to see them. They're going to play a prominent part in the later half of season six. They're Negan's group. So this is really the first introduction we've had to Negan's people. No names mentioned until, of course, you get to the very last episode and you hear the name Negan. But that's who these guys were. It was Negan's people. D, Big D, is a guy by the name of Dwight. And Dwight is a big guy in Negan's organization. He's very big. Well, up to a certain point. But um, what's really important about the whole interaction between D, a.k.a. Dwight, and Daryl is that if you read the comic, you know Dwight kills a major character with a crossbow. <laughs> Oops. So that got set up. Dwight kills a major character with a crossbow. Okay. Now we know what's going to happen. That's been set into motion. Going back to Abraham and Sasha. Remember I talked about the death of Holly. And back in, back in um, Alexandria. And I said that's going to have repercussions down the line. Holly ends up hooking up with Abraham. Uh, in the comic, Abraham saved her life, just like he did in the TV show. When they were attacked by walkers at the construction site, he saved her life. Well, here she dies. So who picks up the mantle of Holly? It looks as if Sasha is going to be the new Holly, in case, except in the instance where maybe Sasha's going to die. We don't know yet. It's being teased. There's a lot of teasing going on that Holly may die, yeah, not Holly, uh, Sasha may die sooner than we expect. We don't know uh, because she's actually filmed the pilot for another TV show. So there's a possibility she may not be on The Walking Dead much longer. But anyway, they're sort of throwing Sasha into this role of Holly. And again, if you know the comic, Holly plays an important part in the death of another character. Um, you know, shit just happens. <laughs> so uh, there's two major things that have really been set up. I, well, three actually. We first get introduced to Negan's people. We see Daryl hand over the instrument of death for a major character. And we also see the possibility that Sasha maybe starting out as the avatar of someone who causes the death of another character. It, it's all set up. It, really, this is one of those cases where it's real helpful if you've read the comic and you're seeing this, you're going, hmm, I see how this is all working out. And of course, at the very, very end when we hear help, we know what that relates back to. That relates back to the Alexandria shitstorm. 
which is instead of calling it, you know, the the ASZ, the Alexandria Safe Zone, we're just going to start calling it the ASS, the ASS, Alexandria Shitstorm. And that's what's coming pretty quick here because, let's face it, you know, Rick had one job and one job to do, and he didn't do it. So that's the end of this. That's the end of Always Accountable. Uh, my next recap, I hope, is coming soon. I'm going to try to get it filmed today. And uh, thanks you, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.